Record setting wildfires burning across the nation's west coast are turning landscapes into an eerie scene, seemingly out of an apocalyptic movie. By now, you've seen them. Skies turned orange and red as thick smoke blocks out the sun, soot and ash blankets the ground, and all of it, combined with the COVID-19 pandemic, is sparking some major health concerns. As Sarah Donchi from our Los Angeles station, KCBS, reports, experts say that if you see or smell smoke, it is always best to stay indoors and shut your windows. The sunset on the Los Angeles basin blanketed in smoke and haze. Much of the evening looked a lot like it did throughout the day, dark, bleak, and cast in an eerie orange glow. The smoky skies kept Southern Californians inside and on the hunt for air purifiers, a hot ticket item on one of the smoggiest days of the year. I went to three Targets and one Costco and one Best Buy. <laughs> Jamie, who lives near where the Bobcat fire continues to burn in the Angeles National Forest, said the smoke was so bad inside her home, it actually got her out of bed at 2 a.m. I woke up because smell was too bad and my kids were complaining about it. And this morning, my eyes, even though I was staying inside, getting really irritated and uh, my throat getting hurt. Southern California is dealing with a one-two punch. Smoke from the Bobcat fire and the El Dorado fire in Yucaipa, plus... A lot of what the rest of the, the, the Southern California area is seeing is the smoke that's high up in the atmosphere. And that's smoke from the Northern California and Central California fires. The result? Apocalyptic skies full of smoke that was so thick it made it difficult for the sun to shine through. Not to mention poor air quality, especially in the San Gabriel Valley. In fact, the unhealthy air and smoke was bad enough that it prompted LA County to close six of its COVID-19 testing sites Thursday and Friday. And while the smoke and ash are what gets your attention, it's what you can't see that has health experts worried. Tiny particles that can be inhaled deep into the lungs and in some cases can pass directly into the bloodstream. That's why the South Coast Air Quality Management District has paid close attention to our air quality readings today. Some uh, unhealthy readings, maybe one or two in the very unhealthy, but most are most are unhealthy, which is not a good thing. You know, it's way above uh, air quality standards. The California Air Resources Board tells us particulate matter has been known to affect the lungs and the heart. And those masks you've been wearing during the pandemic, chances are they are not doing anything to help. So if you're just wearing a cloth mask, they're not very effective at all for these very small particles that can penetrate deep in the lungs. Wildfires have been intensifying in recent years, many of them usually accompanied by unprecedented heat waves. And CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli says that it's no coincidence, it's climate change. He is here with us now to provide some insight. Jeff, I really, really like talking to you about this sort of stuff because not only do you give us sort of the information that we need, but you, you kind of also give us options. You, gi you give us a little hope at the end. But let's talk about these unbelievable images that we have been seeing of skies that are orange and red. It looks like something out of a movie mm -hmm. scene. Because of these wildfires, mm -hmm. what exactly are we seeing? So, you know, the orange sky is just like sunrise and sunset, except not just on the horizon, it's all over the sky. And that's because when you infuse all of this smoke into the atmosphere and then it kind of settles over a city. And so that's what happened with San Francisco. The wind switched directions. It settled on top of San Francisco. Well, you know, in light, it contains all the colors of the spectrum. Usually you don't see the colors of the spectrum unless you can somehow bend the rays within the spectrum and you separate the blues, the yellows, and the oranges. Well, at sunrise and sunset, because the atmosphere, because remember, when the light comes through at the horizon, it comes through a very long piece of the atmosphere, whereas it, when it comes through in the middle of the day, it just goes through that short part of the atmosphere. Going through the horizon, it goes through pollution, and it goes through haze, and it goes through clouds, mm -hmm. and it ref uh, reflects and refracts and scatters. And what you see are only the oranges because all the blues get scattered out. And so that is the reason for the red sky. It is not the apocalypse, hopefully, and it's not climate change. <laughs> Well, very. See, I told you that you always gave us a little hope because, yeah, it really does look apocalyptic. It's not the apocalypse. And, um, <laughs> it's not right. the apocalypse. It's just science. Mm -hmm. But speaking of science mm -hmm. and climate change, how does climate change factor into these wildfires? You know, every year we cover wildfires um, in the country. I feel like, you know, normally we're talking about California and there may be other spots like um, Arizona, but I don't. I don't think that I haven't actually seen this sort of widespread 
um, situation where we see wildfires in a number of different states? So this is the worst that I've seen too, and it's the worst that pretty much anyone alive has seen in the West. This is pretty unprecedented, especially now. You know, back in the 1920s, they had almost bigger fires, but we had nothing to stop them. Now we have stuff to stop them, and so we've been able to quell fires for the past several decades. Not anymore. Climate change is overtaking our defenses, as you can see. And look, look at the size of fires back around 1980. Look at the size of fires now. So this is total burned area in the western United States. We'll notice also that the temperature has been going up the whole time by around uh, an average of around you know two degrees Fahrenheit. Some places going up three to four degrees Fahrenheit. The bottom line is that you know the, the hotter it is, the more energy there is in the atmosphere, and the more evaporation that happens, and that dries out the ground, it dries out the atmosphere. And research shows that that what we call moisture gap, the dryness in the atmosphere, can explain all of the increase. So look at 2020. It's literally off the charts. The highest totals were somewhere in the three and a half million. We're right now at four and a half million, and it's only the middle, the middle of fire season. This is going to really be unprecedented. You can see how the West and the South here warming faster than anywhere else in the United States. So as a result, fire season in California is two to three months longer than it was exhausting resources. Burned area in California has increased by five times. And you know what? I'm going to cross that 15 of 20 because now it's 17 of the 20. That's how fast things are changing. 17 of the 20 largest fires in California have burned since uh, 2000. And right now we have five of the top 10 fires ever burning right now. So some pretty cool, uh, pretty incredible stuff is going. And just one more thing to add to that. Right at the, on the heels of these two unprecedented climate-driven heat waves that we had in August and September, there was a big dip in the jet stream, drove a storm to the south. This crazy wavy jet stream, which is somewhat uh, affected by climate change too. And it forced a tremendous amount of wind right into California. So on top of heat and fires that were already burning, you drive 50, 60, 70 mile an hour winds and everything becomes out of control. Um, so just to give people a sense of just how unprecedented, as you said, uh, this is, and I, I long for precedented times because unprecedented uh, yes, is exhausting and damaging. Uh, this year, several states have broken wildfire records. According to a predictive services meteorologist with the National Interagency Fire Center that's in Boise, Idaho, uh, this is the biggest wildfire outbreak in the U.S. since at least 1910, rivaling the uh, past fire season that we saw in Australia. And we know how destructive that was in Australia. Australia. In Australia, we're talking about long-term permanent damage, not just to um, the foliage there, but to the animals that live there as well. What makes this year so much worse than, than others in modern time? I know you sort of pointed out, when we looked at that graph, we've been kind of inching towards this, but then there's this major spike yeah. for 2020. So, you know, this is the worst the climate has ever been, at least in our lifetimes and way beyond way way before that actually in any modern time since really humans have existed but you got to think about it this way this is the best it will ever be if that's not scary i don't know what is because things are only going to get worse from here fire seasons are going to continue to get worse doesn't mean next year is going to be worse than this year it probably won't be but overall these really banner years will become more and more frequent uh, over time and we we described all the reasons for that climate change is warming the atmosphere and you might think well Big deal. The temperature goes up one, two, three degrees. Well, if your body temperature goes up three or four degrees, you have a fever, you're in bed, you're sick. If it goes up more than that, you're really in trouble. That's how sensitive the Earth's system is, just like the human system. Oh, that's a great comparison. Just a few degrees can make such a difference. Uh, Jeff Berardelli, thank you so much. Ken.